today. AMD gives you free performance. Intel's CPUs are going 3D. Intel's ARC GPUs are dead on arrival. Next-gen Ryzen gets shown off. And Ryzen 7000 is way more powerful than AMD said. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD's newest Radeon Adrenaline driver has officially been released. Of course, I rarely discuss new driver updates, but this is a special one because it includes the DirectX 11 performance boost. Remember that I went over a preview driver that showed a pretty massive performance increase in DirectX 11 a little while back. I'm talking performance as high as 30%, which is like a whole new generation. Well, that was just a preview, and the full release is now out. So if you haven't already, make sure to download that up update. It also comes with a new slider for RSR, new optimizations, and more. Basically, your computer just got a huge performance boost. As the GPU market continues to cool down, a lot of people are hopeful about a return to normalcy. But what if there's a market where insane retail prices are actually celebrated? Where inflation is not an issue, but a benefit? And what if I told you that you could enter it at a fraction of the price billionaires pay with today's sponsor? I know, it sounds too good to be true, but let me hit you with some numbers. This market has seen prices outpace the S&P 500 total return by a whopping 164% for the last 26 years. When inflation is over 3%, like it is right now, this market has price appreciation just above 23%. And the best part? It's booming right now. Just a few weeks ago, there was a sale for $195 million, which the New York Times says underscores the global strength of this market at a time of volatility in broader financial markets. The Times also says this is further proof as to why this market can be used as an investment hedge. If you're ready to learn more, just click the link in my description to head to Masterworks, where you can learn more and get started at a price that works for you. Next up, we have a massive reveal that shows Intel is going 3D. The story comes from a schedule that was released for this year's Hot Chips event, and in it, there are presentations coming from Nvidia, AMD, Intel, and a ton more. But there's one piece of information that's really interesting. Under a presentation from Intel, it's titled, Meteor Lake and Aero Lake, Intel's next-gen 3D client architecture platform with Favaros. For those who don't know, Favaros is the name for Intel's 3D packaging technology, and it's currently being used in their Ponzi Vecchio GPU. What's great is that this confirms Intel plans to use it as early as their Meteor Lake CPUs, which are set for release in 2023. Basically, Intel isn't slowing down when it comes to their CPUs. Unfortunately, when it comes to Intel's ARC GPUs, they look set to be dead on arrival. Yep, it looks that way. Intel has delayed their desktop ARC GPUs multiple times at this point, and really, I'd say the company is in huge trouble with their GPU launch, specifically because we're hearing things are set to launch even later. According to a video from Moore's Law is Dead, Intel's desktop Alchemist GPUs may not launch until Q4, or at least a launch in volume, so they could have a paper launch prior to that. Actually, Intel effectively confirmed it already, given they said that desktop cards will be launching in China first, so the worldwide release likely won't be until months later. The problem is that both AMD and Nvidia are expected to launch their next-gen GPUs this year as well, and from what we've seen, Intel's ARC won't be able to compete with this generation's high end. So against next-gen, they'll probably have a really hard time. And Moore's Law is Dead heard that ARC could launch after Nvidia's own next-gen paper launch. Basically, things are looking worse and worse for Intel's first big jump into discrete GPUs. Next up, AMD's 16-core Ryzen 7000 CPU was shown off in all its glory during a new video that goes over the installation process for the new CPU. Unfortunately, that video has since been set to private, but not before someone re-uploaded it. It was originally made to show PC builders the process of installing and uninstalling the AM5 CPUs. As you can see, it's a pretty simple process. You have the two notches so you know it slots in right, then you simply close the latch. Now we can see that it is an engineering sample, so it's not a final launch CPU, but it's obviously close. Now I've seen some people wonder about thermal paste on the heat spreader actually getting onto the CPU, but as you can see, when they take the cooler off, it looks completely fine. Just try not to overdo it. We also get a good look at the AM5 socket here. All in all, AMD's next gen is looking good to go. 
And speaking of Ryzen 7000, it looks like AMD was in fact downplaying the performance of their next-gen CPUs during the company's recent Computex event. For those who don't know, AMD recently went over performance numbers for their next-gen Ryzen 7000 CPUs. For one, they claim that single-threaded performance is over 15% faster than last-gen, and this includes both IPC and clock increases, so that number was a bit disappointing. I mean, Ryzen 7000 is set to get a huge clock increase as well as move to their 5 nanometer node. Now, as I said in my video on it, they could be somewhat downplaying the results, or certain workloads could be way better than that. Of course, it's tough to think marketing would let them completely sandbag here, but that actually looks like it is the case. If you remember, AMD showed off an undisclosed Ryzen 7000 CPU going against Intel's 12900K. The benchmark was a render in Blender. Wait a second. Render in Blender, a Blender render. Okay, I'm done. In the benchmark, AMD's Ryzen 7000 part was 31% faster than Intel's 12900K. Now, the 5950X is already around 15-20% to faster, so that's about with that 15%. Here's the thing, though. When we look at AMD's footnotes on it, they share the actual scores. And when we do the math, AMD's Ryzen 7000 is actually over 45% faster. AMD got that 31% number by doing it backwards, which shows how much slower Intel's 12900K was. Now, this could have just been a mistake given AMD says that it's 31% faster, which isn't right, but that doesn't make much sense given AMD would have triple checked this before announcing it to the world. Basically, AMD could be tricking everyone, including Intel, into thinking their CPUs are way worse than they are. Plus, they may not have even used their 16-core CPU for this test. I mean, that 15% could really be the bare minimum in one random benchmark. I guess time, as always, will tell. So while that does it for today, do you think AMD's downplaying Ryzen 7000, or is it really 15%? Let me know down in the comments below. And definitely make sure to check out today's sponsor, Masterworks, in the description below. And as always, have a great day!